Good morning and welcome to worship with Long's Peak United Methodist Church. We're so glad that you're here today to, to uh, worship with us and to worship the risen God. Friends, today is International Cappuccino Day. And I'm so excited about that. I love cappuccino. I can't really have it that much anymore because it's not really good for me, but I do love cappuccino. And the reason I bring that up is actually Reverend Jeremiah in his sermon today is going to be talking about uh, a conspiracy and talking about the, uh, the parable of the yeast. Okay. And the reason I bring up cappuccino is that when the first time I ever had a cappuccino, I didn't quite understand why it had to be uh, a lot of foam and a little bit of coffee. The answer to that is simple. Espresso is really, really, really strong. And if you have too much of it, you will uh, not feel so great. However, just the right amount and it will get you invigorated for the rest of the day. If you have too much yeast, you're not going to have the right kind of bread. But if you have just the right amount, you're going to have perfect bread. So let's stick around and find out what Reverend Jeremiah has to say about yeast and the kingdom of heaven. Welcome to worship. Long's Peak. Uh, my name is Katie, and I am really excited to do an experiment with you today. Now, I want you all to think, what is something you love to do? What is something that you love to do that helps other people? That is so important right now. God wants us to choose kindness. He wants us to choose love and being able to do actions that help that i think is the best way how we can share god's love are you ready for our experiment today i am i have to put on my mask because i'm gonna have my friends come and help me so pastor jeremiah pastor phil i need you Come on down. Excellent. So, I have. Where do you want us? Oh, why don't you come stand right here? Perfect. I have a very, very important question. Do you want a piece of chocolate or do you want a mint? Mm, I want a mint. Why? Because they're minty. Why? Because if you take those mints and you go in the bathroom and go <laughs> in the mirror, you can shoot little green sparks and see yourself in the dark. But why choose the mint? I just told you why. <laughs> would you like a chocolate or would you like a mint? <laughs> I'd, I'd like the chocolate, please. Why? Because I think that chocolate is delicious. Why do you think that? Because my taste buds say so. Why? Uh, because the synapses in my brain say so. Excellent.
Excellent. Now I just asked them a question, and I asked why. Why? Why? Do you ask your grown-up why a lot? I know my child does. Why? It is the choice, the choice that you make to do what you love, to do something that you like. It's being happy. It's choosing to be happy. And sometimes when you're given an option of making a good choice or maybe a not a good choice, what is going to lead you to spread God's love? <laughs> Remember to spread love, choose kind, and we'll see you next time. For all those who are in our hearts and minds right now, please join me in a few moments of silent prayer, and then I will lead a prayer, and then would you join me in the Lord's Prayer? Let us pray. Lord God, we come here this morning not always counting our blessings, but complaining, probably like the Israelites did in the desert. Lord, help us to be steady in our faith. Help us to look up to you. Help us to follow your teachings. Help us to be kind to those around us, to those everywhere that we agree with and don't agree with. Lord, we just heal, pray that you will heal our fractured nation. We pray for all those whose lives have been turned upside down from fires, storms, flooding, political turmoil, riots, injustice. Our hearts go out to them and ask that you would help us each in our own way to do what we can to heal these wounds. But above all, teach us how to be kind, to treat all others as we want to be treated. Father, grant that what we say with our voice, we may believe in our hearts. And what we believe in our hearts, we will show forth in our lives. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us all how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, as we get ready to listen to the song for our offering, I want to let you know about two opportunities that you can give your offering back to the church. The first thing is that uh, today, from 1 to 2.30, we're going to be having a food drive for the Hour Center. And we're going to have it in the parking lot today, regardless of what the weather is, come. If it's a beautiful day, we're going to be there. If it's a snowy day, we're going to be there. If it's a rainy day, we're going to be there because uh, hunger doesn't take a day off because of bad weather. So we would love for you to come support the Hour Center with your gift of uh, food donation. If you're interested in specific items, you can look up their website, ourcenter.org. In addition to that, we will be having a thank you for you uh, 
and you can come get coffee and donuts and uh, cider and bagels uh, during that same time. They're free. They're, they're a way for the staff to say thank you for your offering to the church. The second thing I want to let you know about is the opportunity to come help us decorate the sanctuary. For Christmas. And I know it feels a little strange to be talking about decorating the sanctuary at the beginning of November. However, uh, Christmas is going to be here and Advent is going to be here before we know it. And it's important that we are decorated uh, and, and bring people into the spirit of Advent. So next week we will have, excuse me, not next week. Yes, next week the 15th, uh, we will be having our uh, sign-ups for decorating the church uh, sanctuary. Uh, sign up with, with, with Miss Katie at katie at lpumc.org, and we look forward to that. Let's listen to this next song.
The scripture this morning starts out with the first four verses of Psalm 78. Give ear, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings from of old, things that we have not heard and known that our ancestors have told us. We will not hide them from their children. We will tell them to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might and the wonders that he has done. And also one of Jesus' parables. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast, which a woman took and hid in a bushel of wheat flour until the yeast had worked its way through all the dough. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Hi, I'm Jeremiah. I'm lead pastor at Long's Peak. And uh, today we're going to be continuing with our sermon series, Heaven on Earth Now. We've been basing this on the parables of the book of Matthew in which Jesus is talking about the kingdom of heaven. Uh, Jesus talks about it in ways that he, he catches gl glimpses. He, he says the, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, or it's like a, uh, a yeast, or it's a, a pearl buried in a field, or the kingdom of heaven is like a banquet feast. He doesn't just sit the disciples down and say, this is what I'm talking about. Rather, he, he casts glimpses at it. So today we're going to be talking about the, the parable of the yeast. Now last week we covered this concept of the kingdom of heaven, and I'll give you a quick recap of what Jesus was talking about. Um, he was talking about, in last week's uh, sermon, was talking about the mustard seed. His point was that something very small grows into something very large. Uh, we do this, we grow too. We grow in our understandings of the world, we grow in our faith, we grow in our relationships to one another. And Jesus is, is saying that to, to grow, to experience the kingdom of heaven, means that we grow in our faith to God. So this is the up and down. We grow in faith in our relationship with God, and we grow in our relationship with each other, those around us. You see the cross here. So we, to experience the kingdom of heaven, we grow in these relationships. So we can't experience the concept of the kingdom of heaven without these relationships. When Jesus spoke of the kingdom of heaven, he was not talking about a destination. It's not a location. It's not another realm or a afterlife or another interplanetary dimension. Jesus was talking about the kingdom of heaven right here on earth. It's a set of values. It's, it's God's values that guide us in the way that we treat one another, the ways that we live in the world. And that is what this sermon series is about. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's in our midst. So today we're going to be talking about the parable of the yeast. Uh, the passage is the kingdom of heaven is like yeast, uh, which a woman took and hid in a bushel of flour until the yeast had worked its way all through the dough. So to get into this, par uh, this parable, I'd like to talk a little bit about conspiracy theory. So uh, you may know, there may some, uh, some of you may know that, that Denver International Airport is actually a, uh, that the airport is built over top of an underground city that is the headquarters for the New World Order, a one world government. And there's clues to their, uh, to their organization. Um, there are some rather creepy murals within DIA that, that forecast this underground um, New World Order. They also say that, uh, that Blucifer, that hideous blue horse sculpture that you pass as you drive into DIA with the red glowing eyes, some claim that that is a, a, a tip of a, a nod, a tip of the hat to the four horsemen of the apocalypse for this New World Order. I don't know about that one. Or how about this one, the moon landings? 
It, it astounds me that there are still people on this planet that claim that the crewed missions to the moon from 1969 to 1972 never happened. They say that these are uh, they're staged, that the, the photographs of, of Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong were, were taken on a sound stage. Well, just in case you may be interested in, in believing that or to discredit that or whatever you do, I, I thought I'd share this bit of knowledge with you that during the early 2000s, the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter sent back high definition photographs of the landing sites and yes, on the moon today, there are still footprints where the astronauts walked around. I also thought it was interesting that five of the six flags planted by these crews are still standing. Unfortunately, the sixth flag, which is no longer standing, got knocked over by Apollo 11's own thrust of its rocket when it took off. Well, no one's been back since to put the flag back up, but I thought that was worth sharing. Here's another conspiracy theory for you. I'm a big Beatles fan, so perhaps you've heard of this one. Did you know that Paul McCartney died November 9th, 1966? This would have been at the height uh, of the Beatles' heyday. And the claim was, is that Paul McCartney died in a car accident on the M1 highway, and the Beatles uh, casted a look-alike contest, uh, and a gentleman named Billy Shears won the look-alike contest. And, and really, he, Paul is dead, but he is standing in for Paul McCartney. And uh, there are people that have, have latched on to this, and they think that the Beatles have hidden little secret messages. Sometimes if you play a Beatles track backwards, maybe it reveals the truth. Um, that The album covers themselves have some, uh, some clues to it. Of course, this is a famous album cover right here. This is the Abbey Road cover. And people who buy into the conspiracy that Paul is dead claims that this is a funeral procession walking across the street at Abbey Road and that you see John Lennon in white as he is like the pastor or the spiritual figure. Ringo Starr is behind him in a suit and people say he's the undertaker. And then Paul McCartney is walking out of step with no shoes on. He's the only Beatle who's not walking in step. And people say that's to signify there's something different about him. He's, he's dead. And then George Harrison is wearing the, the blue dungarees. He's, he's the grave digger. Now, I think that the Beatles uh, did put some messages in some of their songs to kind of tease the public. I think they got on the bandwagon and said this is kind of humorous. Now, you know, I've, I've shared in multiple sermons that I'm a historian. So I will tell you how this cover came to be. And I, I'm going to say that there's not that much foresight of casting Paul's dead. Basically, the long and the short of it is the Beatles had one more album to release under contract, and the Beatles were kind of sick and tired of each other. So they put together this album, Abbey Road. They said, if we're going to go out on a, on a note, let's go out on a strong note. It was a great work of art. But then when it came time to photograph the album cover, they couldn't figure out a name. They talked about naming it Everest, and they would fly and take a picture of Mount Everest. And finally, it was out of exasperation and frustration that one of the Beatles said, let's just, take, just go take it out front. And they stopped traffic. They took that picture on the Abbey Road. Now, the interesting thing is that for years, that crosswalk has needed to have been repainted. And they can't because there's so many tourists that like to dodge the cars to get their photograph, you know, like the Abbey, Abbey Road cover. And I heard recently that one of the side effects of the pandemic was finally that traffic has slowed enough that they have been able to repaint the crosswalk for Abbey Road. The thing about conspiracy theories that ties all of these together is that People who believe conspiracy theory desperately cling to them. They become devoted to the story. The other thing about conspiracy theories is they're illogical. They're irrational. They take what normal thought looks like and they distort it. And, and so what we would think, no one would believe that. These people who do 
really grab a hold to it. Have you heard of the Flat Earth Society? There's people that believe our planet is still flat. I don't know how you can do that. I think some people just like being contrary. Simple as that. But there are folks who devote themselves to it. Now, we tend to hear the term conspiracy in a negative light. And I don't think that Jesus is using the parable of the yeast in a negative way. I think rather what he's trying to say is not that this is negative, but he uses this idea of conspiracy is that it's subversive, it's secretive, um, it's illogical, it's different than what the world believes. When he's pointing to the kingdom of heaven, it's a different set of values. That's where the, uh, the, the conspiracy comes in. And here's a couple places where, where I think we can see that. In some of the translations, the word or phrase is the woman hid, or she secretly hid the yeast. In the King James translation, the passage reads, the kingdom of heaven is, unto, is like unto leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal until the whole was leavened. See, the implication here is that she was being secretive, that she wasn't supposed to be doing this. She was sneaking it in on the side. Um, I think part of what lends to this idea of a conspiracy and makes it scandalous is not just that she was secretly hiding, but what she was hiding. It says that she was hiding yeast or hiding leaven in the bread. Now, leaven is a piece of fermented dough from the previous batch that you, is it, is it, ferments, you, you add it in to the, the current flour, and it causes your bread to rise. Now, this would have gone against Jewish purity laws or, or kosher food laws, because fermentation was seen as impure, unclean, something that is putrid or rotting or fermented. That has a connotation of death and evil. So there's that secrecy when Jesus is saying, this woman was hiding yeast into the bread. I could see the disciples going, ooh, that's scandalous. I mean, that's why when they celebrate prior to the Passover feast, that all yeast or leaven is removed from the house and destroyed because it's impure. So this woman is sneaking the yeast into the bread. The point that Jesus is making about this parable is the transformational power of the leaven. The leaven changes the whole nature of bread, okay? So if, if you know me, I'm a history buff. If you've ever had hardtack from the Civil War, it's a water biscuit. It's nothing more than water and flour, and it's hard as a rock, and you break your teeth on it, and there is no flavor and very little nutritional value, and yet you add a little bit of yeast, you add that leaven to the bread, and the bread becomes, it rises, it becomes fluffy and spongy and tasty. Would you rather have uh, some French garlic bread or hardtack? So we're getting a glimpse that, that that bread is something interesting. It's growing. I can see uh, Jesus as he's talking about a little bit goes a long ways, a little bit to leaven. I can see Jesus thinking in the back of his mind as he's preaching to disciples. He says, it's like a, a woman who hid this yeast in the bread. And what he's thinking is, you disciples, you are like that leaven. You're turning the world upside down from what the values of the world celebrates. Israel is big and mighty. You are tiny, but you are like that yeast. We see that coming out in, um, in this idea of a little bit making a, a, a big difference because some translations talk about mixing in a measure into 50 pounds of flour. That adds to the conspiracy. At this time, there were not commercial ovens. Why was this woman baking 
50 pounds worth of bread. That is a tremendous amount of bread for this time. Typically, you would break, bake just for your meal. You, there was no way to preserve it, to store it. So there's the scandal there as well. 50 pounds is a tremendous. So the point Jesus is making is that little tiny bit of yeast in that gigantic volume of 50 pounds, that makes a huge difference. That's what rises the bread. A little bit of salt in 50 pounds, you'll never know it's there. But a little bit of yeast in 50 pounds makes all the difference. I'd like to, to share a story with you about the Burrito Boys. So in 2010, um, a man uh, asked his son, Alec Johnson, what his son and his friend would like for Christmas. Um, the, the son, Alec, and his friend, they were going to go to the, the family's uh, um, home in Ohio. They lived in California, and, and the father said, what do you want on your Christmas list this year? And both Lucas and Alec said, you know, they, they came back with a list that said, we want a MacBook Air and iPads and iPhones and all these technical gadgets. And Alec's dad, Michael, thought, you guys are missing the spirit of Christmas beside, behind what you would like to have on this Christmas list. So Michael uh, put together the, the, the fixings that they made 54 breakfast burritos. And Michael took his son Alex and their friend Lucas and they went to inner city San Diego and they started looking for people on the streets to hand out burritos. And at first, the, the, the son and his friend thought that they were being punished, that they had to spend a Sunday morning passing out burritos on the street. But when they came back, they were changed. They had an experience as they got to talk with the people they were giving burritos that the boys then said, can we do this next week? And then they talked to their friends and said, you should come do this with us. And they went the next week and the next week. Now this started off in 2010. Now, today, in 2020, they get up at 4.30 in the morning and they assemble 600 breakfast burritos that they take into the streets of San Diego. As of this day to this recording, they have had 489 consecutive Sundays or serving 249,560 burritos served. They now have a volunteer staff of 600 people who step in to help with this. Now with COVID, they're operating on a skeleton crew, but they're continuing to take this uh, burrito ministry into their community. Now what I like about it is the son Alec says this, our goal is to get people off the streets, but until they want to, pro uh, oh, excuse me there, let me phrase this. Our goal is to get people off the streets, but until they want to, <laughs> this is a problem when, you're when your text doesn't work. Okay. Our goal is to get people off the streets. We want them to provide with a little nutrition, a little hope, and a little dignity. Now see, that is kingdom of God speech. We want to get them off the the streets. That is a big picture goal. And in the meantime, we're going to give a little yeast, give a little burrito, treat people with kindness. See, that is what this passage is about. It's that little bit of yeast. It's growing into the kingdom of heaven. These small acts of love, of dignity, of hope. This is where we experience the kingdom of heaven. You see, the yeast is small, the burrito is small, the actions that you and I choose to do through our church, we might feel are, are futile, or maybe they're not going to be blessed the way we would like, but it's these small acts that grow amazing things. So today's glimpse of the, the kingdom of God is this conspiracy to turn the world upside down. Instead of being the expected norm of the way we treat people, let's, let's treat with kindness, with dignity, Let's sow yeast so it grows for the kingdom. Amen. Friends, as we get ready to depart 
from this place and this time and go into our week full of worship, I want to remind you that a little bit of kindness and a little bit of love can go really, really far. So remember the food drive today from 1 to 2.30 in the parking lot. And also remember that uh, the, the decorating of the sanctuary is next week. And uh, I say all that because a little bit of decoration can make this place a beautiful, beautiful space for us to enjoy for Advent and beyond. So let's go into our week. Choose kind, spread love. Let's go in peace. Amen.